Hello folks, Phil Gallagher of Thraben, you here for another Legacy video, and we're going to be dusting off some fantastic jank today. This is going to be a card that is very near and dear to a lot of our older Legacy players, in particular Hypnotic Spectre, aka Hippie. And a lot of decks used to play Dark Ritual into Hypnotic Spectre as a way to kind of have spiraling card advantage, because random discard like him to Turok is very annoying. Uh, this league was funded by Darth Patiens from the Discord, and I'm very much uh, looking forward to this nonsense. Um, the overall core here is going to be pretty similar to the mono black list I played with Phyrexian Obliterator maybe two or three weeks ago for you all at this point. Um, there's some important changes here, um, quickly going over some of them. Um, if I am bringing out four like, 5-5 five, five sized bodies, I need to compensate for that somehow. And so I found room for a Gurmag Angler, just so that I have something a little bit larger for times where that's important. And I've also promoted one Inquisition of Kozilek to the main deck to kind of help us get to some of this later stuff and to have one more card to help fuel that Gurmag Angler. Um, I've also gotten rid of the mono black land, um, the black channel land, like Takeoma or something like that. I don't remember exactly what it's called. While that was super cool to bring back Phyrexian Obliterator, I don't really feel like it makes the cut here. And really the biggest change that I've made is actually in how the sideboard is constructed. Hypnotic Spectre doesn't win games as hard as Phyrexian Obliterator in a fair fight, right? Like, Hypnotic Spectre is, like, way better than Obliterator versus a combo deck, but often worse versus a fair deck that just has a bunch of decently sized creatures. And so I thought it would be important to have Helm of Obedience in the sideboard. We have zero artifacts in the main deck, so our opponent is not going to have artifact hate in all likelihood. Um, we don't have Urza Saga in this deck list. Everyone in the comments is like, hell yeah, brother, no Urza Saga. I'm here for that shit. I hear you. I hear you. All right. So we can instantly win the game if we control either Douthy Voidwalker or Leyline of the Void and then activate a Helm of Obedience. So this is going to be kind of our catch-all for times when something like Sudden Edict or Hypnotic Spectre or Opposition Agent isn't necessarily good. We can board these in as an alternative way to win. Otherwise, we have a little bit of removal, a little bit of extra discard, and then a good amount of graveyard hate. Notably here, Surgical Hate is generic combo hate, not just Graveyard Hate, which is why I'm playing it even though I have Ley Lines and Douthy Voidwalkers, because you can surgically extract some important combo piece after you make it discard with your giant pile of discard cards in the deck. That just makes sense to me. Um, yeah, um, that's really all I want to say here. Like, I'm just here to cast some Spectres and see what we can do with them. Um, talking very briefly about something that almost made the cut... I considered playing something like an Umazawa's Jitte in this build. It, like, conceptually seemed good to me with Douthy Voidwalker and Hypnotic Spectre having evasion, and sometimes, like, your other creatures come down early or come down as a surprise threat. Um, ultimately, I decided against it because I didn't want to have any artifacts for game one because I really didn't want my opponents to have artifact hate for the post-sideboard games because, like, I have a little surprise waiting for them. Um, so that's kind of the rationale here. Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoy. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. If you are a regular, please throw me a like before this video begins. That's the easiest way to support my content for free. Um, and if you want to kind of get in the Discord where we've been talking about things like this, that information is available in the video description. Have a good day and enjoy the show. Oh, wait, I'm supposed to say let's battle. Let's battle. All right. Um, round one opening hand has no early plays, no acceleration. That's got to go back. I also don't mind mulliganing somewhat aggressively with decks like this just because, like, your dark ritual hands are so freaking good. Um, we're going to throw back Opposition Agent as it's not the card that's immediately playable. The goal here is to use Inquisition to pave the way for Bob. And uh, we can do some void walking after that if we feel like it. Force? Really? Force of Will pitching Force of Negation. That is interesting to me. What does that mean? Like, show and tell? Fuck. Fuck. Oh, never mind. Uh, so we're more in the 8-cast ballpark. That's fine. <laughs> okay. 
Um, I actually just want to win this game by playing Douthy Voidwalker into Douthy Voidwalker and just punching my opponent repeatedly in the face. Like, this also makes an Emery considerably worse in the not-too-distant future. So while, like, playing Bob to help hit future land drops is super hot, I, I just think it's the wrong play here, especially with my opponent having an Ancient Tomb in play. Like, hitting for 3, then 6, then 6 just sounds so good. Like, that is almost assuredly just death for my opponent. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so we are playing against a Days Undoing Stompy deck list instead. Okay, so those cards did not go to my opponent's graveyard. They shuffle their hand and graveyard into library. It's not a discard and then do the thing. All right. So let us continue the pain train here. I have two dead cards because of Chalice. Is it correct to play Hypnotic Spectre, or is it correct to play Voidwalker? Assuming my opponent taps their Ancient Tomb, they are at 10. Ideal 6 next turn, they are at 4. Random Discard is hot. Playing Douthy Voidwalker and Bob next turn is probably the reason why to make this play. Okay, good enough to get a Force of Will. Pitching a Hole Breacher. Now, if my position becomes good enough, I can hold back Douthy Voidwalker for the activated ability to actually just use Force of Will. Um, I'm mostly just looking to kill my opponent, though. I got choices. I think I'm just going to go ahead and attack. I don't really care if this stuff gets countered. Like, I don't need to care about Hull Breacher combo if my opponent is dead, right? Um, I'm going to play Bob first as the bait spell here. Bob is also very good insulation versus my opponent actually comboing off. All right, there is the bait spell. That pitches a hole breacher. And then I'll play another Douthy Voidwalker here, which is Shadow, so unblockable. Urza Saga token doesn't help out with that. And if my opponent taps that Ancient Tomb, they're donezo. Game two? Game two. Um, so just talking about my opponent's deck here, um, and I, I, I say this with no malice, but conceptually, I think my opponent's deck is very bad because it's not good at winning the game. It's good at, like, putting up a lock piece, countering something, and then, like, sometimes you draw seven cards. But, like, a lot of times that isn't good or what happens here happens and some threat, like a Merktide region or something, gets in play. And you, like, draw your seven cards and it doesn't matter because you're dead on board. Um, I really don't like the amount of onboard interaction that this deck has. Okay, so primary question here is, like, do I want to Helm? Helm gives me a very nice finisher. And if I also board in Ley Lines, it makes Echo considerably worse. That would be an eight-card package that I would board in. What would go out? Lily's Medium. Lily's a removal spell, so is Sudden Edict. Probably keep Sudden Edict for being more mana efficient, though. Lily's just better if I spike Dark Ritual. Since my opponent can reload so well, this is probably not Hypnotic Spectre time. Opposition Agent is not great. It's okay versus Urza Saga. Um, assume some number of these come out. Let's assume this happens. I'll probably trim an Inquisition. I don't know. It's kind of nice on the draw like it's bad versus chalice but otherwise it's nice to have a turn one play that's not um dark ritual and i would potentially need three more cuts i can go a little lighter on creatures if i'm expecting to win via helm like i can probably go gurmag out and opposition agent out and then one of like opposition agent or turok out relatively easily let's go the turok out i don't think i want extra inquisitions or anything also not entirely crazy to, uh, hell yeah. Um, it, sorry, it's not entirely crazy to also just, like, play Plague Engineer and put it on Construct. Um, I will be keeping this hand. <clears throat> this hand is quite good versus an Echo hand and will probably win via a Helm around turn five. 
Um, pretty happy with this one, especially after my opponent mulligans. This is a nice depletion counter land, in case you're not familiar with this art. Um, backup helm is very good here. Very, very good. Oh. Just a fast Karn. Uh, unfortunately, um, Inquisition versus... Uh, um, words. Thoughtseize here is super relevant. All right, so that Ancient Tomb's gone. My opponent Karns, which makes my Helm noticeably worse. Maybe I wasn't supposed to Helm. See how we feel about that after this game. Uh, do I want this in play? I think I want this in play. Like, if a land is relevant, I want to play it out sooner rather than later. My opponent has bad lands in play like one of these is okay that helps a lot i was about to say like one of those is about to disappear okay you have like the the ship the airship thing yeah you have the airship thing that's very good all right so that blasts my creature away and leaves me in kind of a rough spot another helm <laughs> thanks um, life's bad. Uh, in case you're not aware of what is about to happen, my opponent can plus turn this into a creature and then have it attack, and, like, that trigger is something that I'm gonna have to worry about for future creatures. Which is no bueno. Inquisition missing Karn, plus, like, drawing triple helm against Karn was just, like, my cards lining up poorly. What the fuck are you doing? you forget I have Leyline? Or, like, is that something you actually want? Huh. This is very strange to me. Very, very strange to me. Opposition Agent is actually a very good draw. Like, is your last card Ottawara or something? Um, like, normally this sets up for, um, an Echo, which I've intentionally shut off here. Uh, yep. So... Oh. The 5-5. Five, five. I will eat 5 damage to the face, and then I'll flash in an opposition agent and kill Karn. And then I can win with Helm. Super inconvenient for me if this is another... Oh. Wild. Oh, they just tutor. Oh, yeah, okay. So they're going for the super cute Mycosynth Lattice line. Yeah. And, uh, they're probably going to lose the game for doing that. I get to kill this Karn. They'll have a Sky Sovereign that they can't activate. And then I'll play Helm. And they are not going to have another Karn to play. That was, uh... That was a little greedy IMO. Alright. Attack Karn. Alright. Karn's dead. One, two, three, four. Play Helm. Activate Helm. Opponent is dead. And as we can all see, Helm of Obedience is good against Karn, and thus ends our lesson for this round. I believe in Bob. We'll keep this opening hand. Um, it's a little mana heavy for my liking, but assuming we can get a protected Bob via Thought... Yikes. A uh, protected Bob via Thought sees, like, Bob will hopefully get enough card advantage that, like, it makes up for the somewhat... Oh, oh god. Okay. The good news is my Bob is protected. Bad news is my opponent's got a lot of cards and my discard is not going to do great things versus them. I think I'm going to take out the crop rotation here. Like, my opponent doesn't really have anything that they need to crop rotation for right now, but a little bit later that could be very detrimental for me if they have that around. Alright, opponent has drawn another Misty for turn here. And then we get to see the Mulch. All right, they have reloaded, and I have, hmm, that's interesting. I think my opponent has so many lands right now that I just play out Dark Confidant. Like, I can Thought Seize and take this Mulch while it still has a target and everything, but that doesn't really excite me as much as drawing, like, an Opposition Agent or a Dalphy Voidwalker or something like that might... Like, I have so much mana here, but zero ability to do things with it without this card. Alright, 
here is another mulch. Oh, Uro and Life from the Loom going to the graveyard there. That's very strong. All right, come on. Something good. Another Bob. It is called Greatness at any cost. Just want to make sure that we all remember that. It is any cost. One, two, three, four, five. I know six of the cards in my opponent's hand. Um, I am not going to Thought Seize here. Um, I would rather use this Dark Ritual. Um, it was somewhat risky for my opponent to wait on that land, by the way. Um, I would rather use the Dark Ritual to power out something that has a higher impact on the game. All right. Forest is gone. Oh, no, that's a different forest. My opponent still has one more forest. Um, let's draw Douthy, Voidwalker, and Sudden Edict on my turn, eh? That would be really legit. Oh, Field of the Dead going into play. The good news is I have a rock-solid mana base versus Wasteland. Bad news is... Don't, oh, Opposition Agent is not bad. All right. Womp. My life total's scary here. Sherman Gangler is not great currently. I can cast it. Four, five, six, seven... Eight, nine. I have nine mana towards it, so I could like Dark Ritual, Thoughtseize, Gurmag Angler, or something like that. The Thoughtseize is just like not great with an Uro attack incoming. Opposition Agent is also not that great right now. I wish a Dark Ritual that's three, four, five, six, seven towards Angler, one towards Opposition Agent. Yeah, I'm I'm just like not quite to doing both of these, which is what I would really like. I think I got to put the Fatty in play. To have a reasonable shot at winning. It also is harder to cast Gurmag Angler next turn than it is this turn. Alright, no thought sees. I can attempt to trade with Uro in combat. I don't know that that goes well for me. I also don't really know that I beat the Field of the Dead <clears throat> in the long term here. That was not... Oh, fuck. Oh, God, why? That's so hard for me to beat. Um, so yeah, in case you're not thinking about it already, um, this is going to be one of those Ley Line of the Void matchups. I don't have a combo finish in game one or anything. Now Uro is protected. I think I've just lost game one. Like my opponent's at 21 life with Field and Maze. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save my thinking power for next round. Let's play some Helms, man. Alright. Ley Lines in, Helms in... Is Inquisition better than Thought Seize? Depends on whether or not my opponent boards in Force of Vigor. He probably will, so the answer is no. And Hypnotic Spectre, like, you are not having a good day, bud. Like, you're just very bad versus the Mulch deck. I'm sorry. Like, I want to play you. I'm very excited about this, but... It's not happening here. What is bad? Are Turok's bad? The rocks might be bad. Um, I need two more cuts. Angler lines up poorly versus um, what's his face? Uro. I don't know. Like I should worry less about Uro because like I'm bringing in ley lines and I have void walkers already. I can probably go down a sudden edict or two. When I'm on the play, I also could play more copies of Inquisition of Kozlek to hit mana bond. Um, actually, I think I like that. Uh, I will not do this on the draw. But I think trying to bully my opponent when I am on the play is totally reasonable. Um, if, hypothetical, if this draws a helm, it just wins on turn two. This hand's not bad. It's not good either. I think it's worth keeping. It's very explosive if I draw, like, a bob or something of that nature. Uh, yeah, I get to take Mana Bond here. It will probably do. And take Winding Way on turn two. Life from the Loom. A lot less... Oh my gosh, did they spike a Mana Bond? No, they're fetching around Opposition Agent. Ooh, hell yeah. Um, That is worth using a Dark Ritual on. Like, miss this. Thought sees my opponent. Take the Winding Way. And then play out a Dark Confidant. 
Like, it's going to slow me down in terms of mana because my opponent is about to play Tabernacle. Oh, no, they're not going to play Tabernacle. <laughs> they, they drew one card. That's very good for me. I thought we were going to slow me down considerably here. Okay, Bob got me another land, which is not what I am looking for right now. It's okay. Like, this ley line is giving me a huge advantage. I guess I'm really only super scared of the mulch once my opponent has, like, a mana bond or an exploration to pair with it. What you got over there? It's the mulch. All right. Oh, man. Literal whiff on mulch. That is... That is rough. Opponent choosing to stop damage rather than tax my mana. Uh, that's a Helm win. So we will go Dark Ritual, Helm of Obedience. And I should really wait to activate this until my opponent's upkeep. Um, that way I play around Force of Vigor. My opponent has one unknown card, and if it were to be Force of Vigor, that would suck. And I would be sad. And instead, we have won this game. I wonder if this Treasure Hunt 8 Mulch version is actually good. This is the second time that I've seen it today. Okay. Um, these Inquisitions are noticeably worse on the play. I could play Surgical. I'm not overly excited about it. I have eight other effects that deal with the graveyard. Um, I think I'm going to play a couple of Sudden Edicts. Like... I'm not scared of Uro, per se, but I need to respect that card, because if I don't have a Dalthy Voidwalker or a Leyline, like, that is a card that kills me in three turns. Um, assuming I take some damage from my own bobs or something. Like, I don't, I don't want that Sudden Edict in my opening hand, but I do kind of want it. The Inquisitions just get so much worse on the draw when my opponent can play out their mana, blah, 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 their mana bond or exploration before I do anything. This is a perfectly reasonable opening hand that also has a ley line. This one's not threatening a fast kill or anything, but like I have a turn one play into a turn two play into a turn three play, assuming some amount of land. And I quite like that. Okay. Um, ley line is a very bad draw. Um, let's see if we can take a mulch effect from my opponent here. Nice! Uh, so my opponent basically has four blanks. Like, that's not entirely true. Like, Maze of Ith does something. Um, they probably just mana bond all of this stuff into play this turn, and I'll be a little scared of a Field of the Dead. Yeah, they'll just mana bond all of that into play. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Alright, are you mana bonding? Like, there are worlds where they hold it for Field of the Dead. Um, that does make them worse against a Hymn to Turok-like effect. Um, but that did not come up here. So, alright. Winding Way is scary. Uh, Winding Way is not scary. Oh, no. It, it did still hit Field of the Dead. Like, that is a little rough. Okay, yep. Alright. So, while that didn't create zombies, my opponent did not give me a chance to randomly discard those cards. Oh, hell yeah. Him is very good. Him is very, very good. Um, I'll make my attack. My Dark Confidant gets mazed. And then in my second main phase, I think I'm just going to main phase just play Opposition Agent. Like, I don't want my opponent to play around that effect and then get ahead. Um... See how well my opponent top decks here. Like, there's very variable things that, like, my opponent can do here. Um, can't be crop rotation. That doesn't make sense. Because agent is in play. So my opponent can't get an instant speed land. Didn't tap Maze of Ith, which is probably a mistake. That's sloppy. Um, since I have three Leyline of the Voids, should I just play out one? Probably. Like, if my opponent were... Yeah, that was sloppy. Okay. Mulch. Reveals three cards. Uh, and I believe my opponent is deterministically dead to Elm activate. Like, I know what the cards in their hand are. They're going to make a bunch of zombies, and it just doesn't matter. Yeah. 
Dismiss. Always yield to Field of the Dead. Oh man, these helms have been clutch. Opponent is mostly just hoping. Uh, yes, I will. I will take a land. Absolutely. All right. Play a land. One, two, one, two, three, four. Helm. Activate dead. GG's. Yeah, you can draw your card. Force of Vigor doesn't matter here. You don't have a green card to pair with it. Yeah. Elm, though. What's our record? Oh, we're 2-0. All right. Um, I have zero lands for my round three match here. Um, I will keep this hand. Um, Turok might be worse than the third land. But I'm going to throw back the third land and believe. So I have a lot of different ways this hand can play out depending on what we think we're playing against. No covered island, so we're probably playing against a control deck. Playing Bob on turn one isn't great if my opponent has Prismatic Ending, but playing Dark Ritual Turok on turn two isn't great if my opponent has a counter spell. Okay. Like, that dodges Prismatic Ending, though. I believe. I believe in you, hippie. This is your day. Your time to shine. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> Where's the plowshares? Damn it! All right, what are you fetching? Tundra. Tundra. Onan is a hater. I I just wanted to have some fun and make them discard cards at random. Hopefully, mana screwing them, allowing me to win the game easily. Is that so much to ask for? This does eat a prismatic ending here. Oh, it's an Uro. <clears throat> so apparently this, like, whole ley line of the Void sideboard plan was very good for today. All right, we didn't get swords after Uro, um, which would have been pretty brutal. Um, super inconveniently, opponent has four plus five cards. Um, so playing Douthy Voidwalker doesn't, like, super, super answer Uro here. Um, which is inconvenient for me. That probably means I am supposed to just play another Bob and try to brute force my way to a Liliana or a, uh, Sudden Edict. All right, there's the fetch. No Dark Ritual Opposition Agent to punish. And that's green, green, blue, blue. Oh, white? Oh, damn it. <clears throat> All right. Your Uro resolves. I do get three looks to find an answer to it, which is pretty good, and it it's not like it kills me immediately either. Oh god, opponent has six gas cards in hand. They didn't put any fuck yeah. Any lands into play. Um this turn's really good. So this is Douthy Voidwalker first. To make sure I just get rid of this Uro forever. No dice. Alright. I do not succeed in getting rid of the Uro forever. But I do succeed in dealing 4 damage and then absolutely bullying the remainder of my opponent's hand next turn. Um, we'll see how much damage they can do this turn, though. Like, they've got a lot of mana. Ending on one of these bobs. Yep. Oh, geez, followed by an ending on another bob. Okay, Ponder's fine. I get to just kick Turok and take both of my opponent's cards and then save Thoughtseize for later. Um, that's nice, but presents me with an Uro problem. Tried to play around that Uro problem. Um, I also believe that I am supposed to just kick this and try to create the largest possible creature here. It's awkward if my opponent has exactly Force Blue card and I don't play around that. But this feels correct and leaves me at a higher life total as well. Okay. Got rid of an Endurance, uh, which would have been one of my opponent's few actual answers to this card. My goal is actually to just grow larger than the Uro. Yeah, this is the four mana for Uro. Alright. So I can, th I can Thought Seize my opponent, grow this to, grow this to a 5-4, and hopefully draw another relevant card. Uh, that certainly counts. <clears throat> Here's the Thought Seize. Brainstorm, Life from the Loam. You may have 
life from the loam. I am taking Brainstorm. That grows the Turok. I've got a 5-4. My opponent attacks me for 6. I crack back for 7. That's an okay world. The not okay portion of it is the fact that my opponent has like life from the loam to create future fuel for Uro for if I like sudden edict it or something. And my opponent um, gets to draw two cards off of their loam here. And then one of those gets to go into play when Uro attacks. It's also going to be like awkward if my opponent like Uro's into um, an endurance and then I attack with Dark Confidant. Um, I think that's going to be kind of one of those it is what it is situations if it does happen. All right. Another Turok. Well, that's happening. So I'll kick that. I will keep the existing Turok. Make my opponent discard two. That grows these. I just got to crash in. Like, I can trade with the Uro. That doesn't really get me anywhere. I'd rather take six and gamble that I can kill my opponent with these two things and plus whatever is on the top of my deck. All right. A little sketchy. Um, in attackers? Yeah, that's what I thought. I go to four. If that's a Jace the Mind Sculptor, though, um, that is not good for me. Fuck. Um... That gets my giant, absolutely thick to rock out of play. Really? We're thinking about this. Okay, we, we thought about it. And then we took the thick boy out of play. All right, Bob. Fuck. All right, to on chump block duty. No point in kicking this here. I will just play out to rock as a chump blocker. Bash in, kill Jace. And, like, if opponent top decks a removal spell that can take Turok out of play, like, so be it. Like, I totally accept that. There aren't too many of those. My opponent has used a Jace already. All right. This thing happens. All right, opponent keeping whatever it is. I will block. Need, like, a sudden edict and some change here. Okay, that was a shuffle. So this is a blind card here. Oh my gosh, Bob. You have betrayed me. Absolute top 10 anime betrayals here. I have to jump block, block with Bob. And then I think at that point I can't really come back in a single card. Not in game one. Now this is kind of what I was talking about in the previous rounds of like being afraid of Uro. Like, it doesn't matter much after the post-sideboard games when I have four more answers to it. But when this happens, especially in game one scenarios, like, it's it's tough. I'm going to go ahead and concede here and value my time. Like, I can I can chump block this Uro again for another turn, but I'm not coming out of this. All right, so I would like the Leyline Helm combo. I also probably want Liliana just as another source of card advantage. Um, I don't think I'll go so deep as to go for Surgical. My opponent has Endurance, making Gurmag Angler slightly worse. I don't hate Hypnotic Spectre. I have to figure out what I'm cutting. Not Turok. Turok's pretty well protected. I'll probably cut more Sudden Edicts when I'm on the play. Um, I might cut Gurmag Angler if I'm looking to win via Helm. Most of the time. Probably cut an Inquisition safely. At this point, I'm happy with most of the stuff in my deck. Actually, I don't think I'm happy with Hypnotic Spectre versus Endurance. Actually, now that I think about it a little bit more. That's unfortunate, because I like the recurring random discard effect. Like That sounds good to me. And then, I don't know, I'll maybe trim one him to Turok or one Thoughtseize. I think I'll make it a him to Turok so that I just have the four thoughts uses as turn one plays. This is a very average opening hand. It's not really good in any capacity, but it's also probably something that I don't throw back. Like, I don't have a third land, I don't have a dark ritual, but at the same time, like, I have cards that do relevant things in the matchup. And I'm very likely to draw a land in the couple of draws that I need to start going towards those. Oh, dark ritual. That's really good. That's really good. 
Um, I probably just use it to double two drop, though. If I just play a three drop, I waste a mana this turn, and I don't think I can waste a mana here. Uh, it's somewhat tempting to opposition agent, but I think I'd rather do this. Douthy is annoying, and then I can him, making it so that those cards don't go to graveyard. Would be a slightly annoying force of will, though. Like, I really want this random discard to happen. Ah, why do I talk? Why do I talk when I play games and curse myself? So, Prismatic Ending is now the thing that would be annoying for this turn. Don't do it. Southy Voidwalker. Okay, well, that at least gives me life. Alright, um, while I drew a Mana Source last turn, um, this is not a Mana Source this turn. And this sort of thing is why I was kind of hesitant about the opening hand. Like, I very well might lose this one to my mulligan decision. Oh man, my opponent has Karakas. That makes Turok notably worse. Where did I land on Turok? Still definitely in the deck, right? Yeah. Um, Narset's annoying here. Like, that's a very good two for one. Just finding a brainstorm. Um, okay, the good news is I have my entire combo kill in my hand. The bad news is I need a lot of mana. And my opponent gets a little uh, impulse type thing from this Narset here. Uh, brainstorm first, though. Maybe going to like use Narset as a way to power through those cards. Okay, there's a Vista to shuffle. And now we get the Narset activation. Finding a Swords. Opposition agent noticeably worse. Uh, we're super stuck on mana. We are relatively heavy on mana, just kind of as a deck here. I'm going to let my opponent brainstorm, and then I'll happily just sudden edict to use my mana. Like, if I'm going to use Liliana as an edict for a potential Uro type effect later, I need to keep the board clear now. <clears throat> so while this isn't uh, necessarily the most exciting play in the world, it's what's happening. The very time raveler makes my opposition agent notably worse. A reminder, gets artifact, creature, or enchantment. That is a lot of card types. This is my swords to plowshares, or maybe to fairy fodder. And I'm on turn six, and I haven't drawn another land yet. This is a little rough for me. Um, we're not planning on winning with this in any capacity, so like this is fine, but. Ugh. Uh, am I fine using this card now? Yes, I am. It's super mana inefficient, and I'm not happy about it. <laughs> uh -oh. Okay. I feel like this one has slipped away. I don't think this one gets to be a trophy league. Um, luckily, we only have two lands in our entire deck that are vulnerable to Wasteland, so... That's the good news here. Bad news is, what the fuck? <laughs> like, my opponent just gets to Swords to Plowshares this and move on with their life. Yeah. Getting, like, Dark Rituals doesn't even bail me out here. Like, Teferi just gets to Plus. My opponent's building up a zombie army that I can't really race. Um, I think I'm going to just concede if my next draw isn't a land. I think I just have... Okay, my next draw is a land. So, I guess I just sorcery speed this. Try to get my opponent to interact with it, use resources on it. Anything that gets them away from interacting with these is actively good for me. What is this? Oh, uh, instant speed, uh, prismatic ending. <clears throat> Again, them using that on that um, rather than something like these is nice. Um, I don't know if they have, like, something that allows them to do that on X's 4. Um, Dark Confidant versus just Edict of Zombie Token. I think I'm just going to Edict a Zombie Token. I think that buys me more time on average. Like, this is not a good play. Like, the Field of the Dead is very much outpacing this card. But this gains me... Somewhere between four and six life, probably. Um, but, uh, yeah. 
like drawing land this turn into dark ritual next turn would be pretty good for me personally. I don't know about you all. That's what I'm hoping for. Not great. Not great. Um, let's just keep playing Liliana's as distractions. They are not good here. I they they gain me some life, but I I have zero agency in this game right now. This game is just a hundred percent like can I possibly draw lands off the top of the library? And if I don't, I'm I'm just dead. Like it's turn eleven and I have drawn one land uh the entire game. So we're not doing super hot in that capacity. Opponent doesn't respect my li <laughs> God damn it. Uh, is there any world where I win now? Opponent has 8 power on board. I don't think so, right? Because I play Leyline and then I die. Yeah. Um, and I can't get two different cards. Yep. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and concede here. GG's. Hey, folks. I hope you're enjoying the show. I recorded 15 rounds of magic today. Um, so if you're enjoying my content, please consider leaving a like or a comment on the video. That sort of thing helps out a lot. And if you find yourself watching regularly, please consider supporting me on Patreon or YouTube membership or doing a donation decklist to kind of keep the content machine running. All right, back to the hypnotic specters. I have a very average looking opening hand here. I'm considering just mulliganing. Like, it's not bad. It's not good either. Again, the Dark Ritual hands are just so much better than everything else. I think I'm going to ship this one. I think I end up with a similar power level hand a ton of the time. Uh, I'm going to keep this. I am unsure if I keep third land. I think I keep third hand. Opponent mulligan to five. I think I just want to make sure that I can cast like a Liliana or an opposition agent that I draw. Hopefully I don't get turn one. Damn it. I'm getting turn one. Unmask Grizzlebrand. Oh shit, opponent does not have the reanimate. So, when I kept this hand, my intention was to cast Hypnotic Spectre on turn one. I don't think I can do that right now. I think I just have to take both of my opponent's cards with him to Turok here. And, hey, yeah, it was land animate dead. Um, and then I can use um, Hypnotic Spectre as cleanup crew um, for whatever is left over in my opponent's hand. Um, definitely living in absolute terror, though. That's not bad. Um, I am going to play out this card. Um, in the worlds where my opponent doesn't just land drop Grizzlebrand me this turn. Oh my god. Having access to that is very strong. Go, go, Gadget. Hypnotic Spectre! Uh, we call that a win? <laughs> I'm going to... Uh... I, I don't know if I can play this. I don't think I can play that card. I really want to. Because double Hypnotic Spectre in play is super sexy. But I think there's too many worlds where my opponent like draws reanimate or draws land animate dead. And I just need to sudden edict shit out of play immediately. Oh, give me priority. Give me priority. Um, I'm just going to edict that immediately. I really wanted opponent to just like pass priority and then not get anything for their Grizzlebrand trouble. Very glad that I held up Sudden Edict. I think it was worth the risk for the first one. I don't think it's worth the risk for the second one. Alright. There is a Grief. That gets to punch through my Sudden Edict here. Now, opponent has made their land drop, so they can't get additional mana unless they drew a Lotus Petal. Gives me a chance to Hypnotic Spectre things out of their hand. Here we go. Randomly ruining my opponent? Got rid of a Faithless Looting. Dark Confidant or Hypnotic Spectre. I think it's Dark Confidant. Um, in the worlds where my opponent doesn't um, get a creature into play this turn, this is more looks at Douthy Voidwalker type cards or Sudden Edict type cards. All right, which one is coming into play? Oh, it is a Faithless Looting. That means Reanimate is on the table, but not really because they are at exactly eight. Oh, Hypnotic Spectre, did you save me? Uh, you maybe didn't save me. Now, um, Animate Dead and Exhume are on the table. Oh my gosh, this is very lucky for me. Very happy here. And a, oh wow, a Thoughtseize and a Sudden Edict? 
Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I will attack my opponent for four. I'll see what they randomly discard with Hypnotic Spectre, and then I'll use that to influence my Thoughtseize decision. I will Thoughtseize my opponent. Um, your Entomb doesn't do a lot. It just takes a card out of your deck. Your Thoughtseize doesn't do a lot either. Your Thoughtseize probably does more. I'm going to take the Thoughtseize. I have Lethal on board. I have an, an, an active answer to the creature that my opponent generates. Um, I think I stole game one back, uh, which I was very worried about. Um, again, I do feel like I got a little lucky here. Okay, there's the delta that I know about. So my opponent can cast a Faithless Looting from Graveyard, but I don't really know where that goes. Yeah, Reanimate is no longer in good. Neither is that in Tomb. Okay, great. We got game one. I can probably win one of the post sideboard of games with graveyard hate of some kind. All right, um, I'm gonna board in a lot of cards. Like I have so much hate here. Um, Liliana isn't crazy either. But an edict did serious work. Turok feels too slow to me. I am not really sure that I want him to Turok and Hypnotic Spectre on the draw versus reanimator. That doesn't seem like great territory to explore to me. It's not like Liliana is amazing either. Like, the plus is awkward. The minus is good. Like, the minus is just insurance. Got a little thinking to do here. I sure did put a Gurmag Angler in my Dark Confidant deck, huh? Um, let's take that out of the deck. I don't want my opponent to reanimate that. I could play... I could not play the Lilianas on the draw. That sounds reasonable to me. Yeah. This'll do. Now, my opponent may mulligan to something that just beats a ley line. Like, that's something to keep in mind. That does happen. Like, a lot of reanimator players will mulligan to their serenity or force of vigor or whatever or sort of effect of that general nature that they have. I'm hoping to take it with the thought seize here. Um, I do think I thought seize rather than inquisition because, like, this can take a grief that the other card can't. Oh. Um. Yeah. We're good. They just kept the turn one hand. Or, I guess it's a turn two hand. They have two mana. Uh, yeah, I'll take the Entomb here and leave them with an awful lot of nothing. My Surgical Extraction doesn't really do anything right now, but it's very good backup for this. Hey, there's a Grief. Pitching an Exhum. This probably takes Surgical or Bob. I think I'd take the Bob. They agree. So they might try to animate dead my Bob. And I will surgical a single copy of Bob in response. Surgical extraction. Target me. A life. Just take the one though. Like I want to draw a Bob. Alright. Yeah, alright. Bonnet has a Lotus Petal that they play out to avoid the Inquisition that they actively know about. Um, so now we're in top deck mode, where I have three cards, they have zero, and I have an active ley line. Um, that's very good for me. Um, because I want cards out of my hand, I'm happy enough to Inquisition here and just trade for what is presumably a, an air quotes bad card. Alright, no play from my opponent. Um, same as last time, I'll, I'll trade for a bad card. Like, I'm good with that. Absolutely. I will still count that as trading for a bad card. Okay, they have just pulled a Thought Seize out of their deck. That's fine with me. I've got a Castle Locked Wayne to keep me going strong, whereas my opponent doesn't really have anything to keep them going strong. Um, yep. Plan repeats. Take that, reanimate. And, uh, yeah, we, we just kind of kind of chill. Okay, um, I'm going to just Sorcery Speed this. This is a... And somewhat unimpressive card here. Like, it's not nothing, but it's not what I'm looking for. That is what I'm looking for. Um, I think that right there is the W. Like, I have six power in play plus a sudden edict and a, like, card advantage engine. Yeah, uh, opponent agrees, and I believe that puts us up to three and one. Very nice. 
All right, we have a Thoughtseize into Bob opening hand with a Gurmag Angler as follow-up. That's pretty reasonable versus a lot of decks in the format here. Uh, we are playing against Elves. Gurmag Angler less reasonable versus Elves. Um, I get to take the best thing from my opponent's hand, which is this Glimpse. Um, but I am very much in danger of just, like, being on the wrong side of the beatdown here. Like, my opponent can play Reclaimer, play Cradle, play Allosaurus Shepherd, and, like, this... Oh, wow. Um, this is a lot of onboard power. Um, I probably just have to trade creatures, like, trade resources for resources as quickly as I can. Um, I don't have main deck Plague Engineers here. So, without a real good A-maker to find... I think my opponent is very favored in at least game one, if not all three games. Um, I guess I'm hitting Wirewoods. Oh, man. Is this, is this shit active? One, two, three, four, five, six. This shit is active. Oh, my God. Uh, good game. Good game. All right. Plague Engineer, get the fuck in here. Um, from there, I have to ask this question of, like, is Leyline Helm better than what I'm doing? All right, what is, what is slow? The slow stuff needs to go. That's Turok. Probably Hypnotic Spectre. I can maybe justify it on the play, but it's tough. I think I like Gurmag Angler just as a fat thing that sits on the board and blocks, but... If I am going to, if, and it is an if, if I board in this package, I'm going to need more cuts. And I probably want this. I don't know, maybe that's slow. Yeah, I think I've got to combo kill my opponent. I don't think, uh, I don't think my deck controls quite hard enough or long enough without, um, something like a Toxic Deluge. Um, let's get rid of Liliana, even on the play here. Now, my opponent is still going to have at least Boseju, if not more, to deal with what I've got going on. So, there's that. Um, and then what do I want to board out? Like, one him or one Bob or something? Maybe one Bob. Like, the Bobs get worse when you add eight, uh, four drops to the deck. The Bobs get worse enough that I play, like, some Inquisitions. Maybe. Like, this is a rough combo. I didn't super think about in deck building, because a lot of the decks are just doing it. Oh, my Gurmag Angler was maybe questionable. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about this card. Let's play some more Inquisitions. The issue is, like, they're not great versus the whole Wirewood Symbiote, Elvish Visionary um, shenanigans that happen. Um, yes, this is fine. It's not exciting. This is not a mulligan, though. Like, I have lands to curve out into Helm. I have answer for my opponent's first play, and then Opposition Agent. Like, this is... A powerful hand. It's not sexy, but it's powerful. All right, Leyline, Swamp, go. Okay, opponent gets a cantrip. That is a wirewood. Oh hell yeah! I get to blow up their land drop with sudden edict. That is absolutely the sort of thing that I'm in for here. And then there's worlds where I even get to opposition agent a land drop. Oh wow. So opponent kept their hand, hoping to hit a land off once upon a time, then missed the land off once upon a time, making their hand much worse. Now my hand is not great right now. Like I, I have literal nothing in my hand, but this opposition agent here shuts off natural orders, it shuts off my opponent's fetch lands. My opponent doesn't actually have that many actual um, factual like mana producing lands. Yeah, and they recognize that and just concede here. They didn't know how early of a concession that was, but from there on, that probably looked really bad. All right, so my Hymn to Turox get worse on the draw. They're just slower. Dark Ritual's still a thing. Can't... All right, let's, let's, like, make a pile of, like, I can't possibly consider and I can consider. So I don't think I can possibly consider any of these cards. So it's just, like, do I want to play Liliana of the Veil 
as a removal spell over some number of discard spells when I am on the draw. Liliana's plus is really bad if I'm planning on winning via Helm. I think I like this. I'm not 100% sure, though. I think I'm just going to keep the Inquisitions to just have a turn one play a higher percentage of the time. I've made my Dark Ritual hand slightly worse by... Oh my god, what a hand. That is beautiful. I get two Thoughtseize, take a relevant card, Sudden Edict a relevant card, hopefully play Engineer a good portion of the board. I'm hoping my opponent does not have um, Elvish Reclaimer. Alright, there's the fetch into a Dryad Arbor. Reasonable? Oh, hell yeah. Um, this hand got even better. Okay. These elves don't do much on their own right now. Like, it's a lot of mana. I'm just going to take the green sun so that my opponent can't randomly, like, elector oof me. And I'll play Sudden Edict as a hiccup and then Plague Engineer away um, most of my opponent's board. Um, this is very good for me in a ton of circumstances. Okay, there's the bayou. Yeah, okay, yeah, my opponent is going to query an into heritage. Yeah, there's the activation. They go one mana, play a heritage druid. They have three mana, and they can play out more elves. If they so desire. They do not so desire. Um, I will just sudden edict. Anything that I can do to make it less likely that my opponent accidentally kills me next turn is very good. All right. Elvish Visionary eats it there. And we'll see... If I randomly die to, like, natural order here. Alright. There's another heritage druid. Three mana. Four mana. Fuck. Yeah. Um, potentially losing this one to just being on the draw here. Okay, this isn't as bad as it looks. This is not lethal. Oh, shoot. Opponent still had an untap. Um, 5, 10, 19. That is lethal. Damn. Like, my, my hand was as good as it possibly could be. Like, I had turn three Plague Engineer and Opposition Agent. Um, it just didn't get there. Like, my opponent was on the play. Like, that that is what it is. Uh, very happy with that. 3-2, three, 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 that was nearly a 4-1. Overall thoughts on the deck list? Not bad. Um, I think I did some tiny hiccups in deck building. Like, the Gurmag Angler should not be in here if I'm playing Dark Confidants while also, like doing these, like, Leyline Helm things out of the sideboard. I think that just puts the the needle of the average converted mana cost a little bit too high uh, in a way that I don't like. Um, so I would replace Gurmag Angler with another, maybe Inquisition or another Liliana in the main or something like that. Hypnotic Spectre did okay in a couple of rounds, but generally speaking was one of the things that I first looked to board out. The power level of this card just isn't there anymore, and random discard at that speed is just like a little too slow and since removal has gotten like better and more efficient since hypnotic specters days there's just more things that are going to mess around with it in a negative way um and even some of the creatures just have kind of invalidated it too so things like ice fang Kawaddle and endurance have just made it a harder sell to want to attack with small flying creatures in particular. Um, and as far as the Gurmag Angler replacement goes, um, I still agree with my logic that Jete probably shouldn't be in the main deck. The, the Helm Juke definitely got people. Um, ultimately, though, I think the question you want to ask with deck lists like this is, is this the best version of Mono Black? And that question is really hard to answer because most of the decks that I have played of this general nature have been pretty good. Like three, three, two finishes or higher, a couple of five O's here and there as well. Um, that's proof that this general shell is good. And then just the question is like, is Urza Saga worth it? Um, how big of an Urza Saga package do you play? Do you want to be playing Karn? Is the Rip Helm thing in the main deck? You know, do you want to paint? Like there's... There's a lot of little nuanced questions and like outside of something like the Pox community where like they play mono black because like they, they want to play black, mono black or they like Pox. I don't think there's a lot of people like really and truly iterating on all of these various versions of mono blacks because there's like dark depths versions out there too as well. Um, and there's versions that have tutors. So like 
this is one of those archetypes that is, or I should say like macro archetypes, that's powerful enough that you you can explore this. This is strong enough to play in Legacy. Is it necessarily going to be your best chance to win a tournament? No, absolutely not. But are, is your matchup spread good enough that like you're going to have fun while brewing? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please click the like button on the way out. If you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you want to kind of get involved with my own community where we talk about some of these kind of deck lists, please consider joining my Discord by pledging on Patreon or becoming a YouTube member. Have a great rest of the day, folks. See ya!